You may have had a bad day, but it doesn't give you a right to keep a bad disposition. That bad day is something that you have got to go through to develop who you want to be on a brighter day. If you allow the bad days to define who you are, then you will look at life and see it that is somehow the dark days are meant to be the right of your life. That somehow that ill omens and bad thoughts were there to wipe out the light that is inside of you. So many times in life, man, we choose to settle for less when so much more is available to us. And I don't know what this message means to you today. Right? I don't know where you're at. My life changed when I stopped deciding to settle for less and I decided to go get the more that was meant for my life. Right, we live in life every single day existing because we've chosen to settle for less at some point in our life. Life is not meant to be lived to exist. Life is meant to be lived to evolve. See, when you're going someplace and you already know how much you're going to make, you already know how far you can go. You're in a dead end position. It erodes your self-esteem. It lowers your sense of yourself. It creates an inner turmoil. It creates an emptiness in you. So I say that your life is worth finding what it is that you're supposed to do. And every single day, I was pursuing perfection and excellence, even though I knew I would probably never catch it, but just the fact that I was willing to chase it, I would defeat most of my opponents because most of my opponents would never chase something that didn't have any guarantees attached to it. Most cats need guarantees in order to be great. Just start working at it just a little bit, but do find out what your work is and hold on to it and don't let your dream go. Don't let it go. But maybe tomorrow you can pick up that fire. Perhaps you can make it a little bit more bright by focusing on the things that you know you can control rather than allowing it to roll over. Well, I would say, pick something, right? Pick something, um, a nameable goal, and then try to implement it. And what'll happen is, you'll learn a lot by trying to implement it, and one of the things you might learn is what the, a, a slightly better goal might be. You know, because if you try something diligently, and you succeed or you fail, um, you're gonna learn from the, the effort expended in the detailed implementation of the goal is going to inform you. You will be slightly different as a consequence of the attempt. And what that'll mean is that the next goal you pick will be a little more suited to you. And so the moment you stop making the same choices that you always make, get ready because it's going to be uncomfortable. And that's the moment you are heading towards the new self. And we call it stepping into the river of change. But now, remember, 95% of who you are is your body as the mind. You know, you've done something enough times that your body does it better than your brain. So you may actually complain unconsciously because your body does it all the time. And all of a sudden you say, no complaining. No more blaming, no more feeling sorry for myself, no more talking about other people. I'm going to stop. You have to make it a part of your passion to say that I'm not going to allow happiness to pass me up. I'm about to run roughshod over everything that tries to stop me from my goals because I am not going to allow the comments from trolls to set my opinion about myself, not now, not tomorrow, not today. Don't compare yourself to what you see on others. Compare yourself to what you know is inside of your mind, that vision about what you could have been. And some of the truth is this, that until you go through some things, you don't realize that the limits you had on yourself were way too low. I want you to understand that life is meant to be lived to evolve, not just exist. 
And I want to tell you right now, listen to my voice, that there's so much more for your life. I don't care what hard time you're going through, there's more to your life than hard times. I don't care what life, what hard time that you suffered in life, what, what loss that you suffered, there's more to your life than what you lost, right? I don't care about that person doing you wrong or what's going on in your life. There's more to your life than that person doing you wrong. The thoughts in your head that say, why don't you start tomorrow? Tomorrow's a better day. This is too hard for me, I can't change. Something's wrong with me, it's my mother's fault. It's my ex-husband's fault. It's my ex-wife's fault. I'm this way because of this event, or the most important one, this doesn't feel right. And the moment you respond to that thought as if it's true, that thought leads to the same choice, which leads to the same behavior, that creates the same experience, that produces the same emotion, and the person says, this feels right. You have to go through some of these trials, some of these dark nights, so that you can write about them and have a have the fodder needed for you to have the fire that can give you the light to make you through every bad situation for the rest of your life. Good things happen to great people. Bad things happen to great people. But what you have to decide is, am I going to allow the bad things to be greater than my good? Am I going to allow frustration to overwhelm me? If you do that, then you never had a purpose, you never had a passion in the first place. Everyone can live life if it were easy. Everyone could thrive if there was nothing that could come after you to harm. But whatever comes after you to harm, it's only there to help shape you into a better person. There's more in you. Dark nights will come, but there's a champion that walks out with the light. You ready to be that champion? lived a life dominated by doubt and fear, how do you step into bravery? Step. That, that's how you step into bravery. Step. Take the step. Step aggressively towards your fear. And that, that step towards your fear is the step into bravery. In that your being is limited and, and flawed and, and fragile, um, you're like the genie, which is genius in the little tiny, in the little tiny uh, lamp, you know, this immense potential, but constrained in this tiny little living space. But the fact that you have limitations means that the plot of your life is the overcoming of those limitations and that if you didn't have limitations well there wouldn't be a plot and maybe there would be no life and so that's part of the reason why perhaps you have to accept the fact that you're flawed and insufficient and and live with it and consider it a precondition for being you're either committed to mediocrity or you're committed to greatness you're either committed to being productive or you're committed to being non-productive. You're committed to being happy or you're committed to being unhappy. Well, the average lifespan is 72 or 82. Whatever it is that you're expected to live, you're going to work 65 of it in order to enjoy 10, 12 years. You've done that wrong. It's the wrong focus. Order to get there, you are going to have to allow that to burn away layers of yourself that don't deserve to be there. There are self-doubts and, and these, these inhibitors of where you've allowed negative voices in your life to tell you what you can be or tell you what you should do. And you are here. That life exists and identity. That the powerful play goes on and you may contribute a verse. That the powerful play goes on and you may contribute a verse.
people who've found their purpose are better partners, better parents, better professionals, better people. And so if everyone in the world was deeply aligned and connected to their purpose, the world would be a beautiful place. And I think any pain we see in the world comes from a disconnect with purpose. The people who need the most love often ask for it in the most unloving ways. So we confuse love with power. Yeah. We confuse love with control. We confuse love with validation and being liked. And to me, love comes from living our purpose, self-love and true love with other people. Commitment is major. See, when you decide that you're going to do something, when you commit yourself to, to live a life that's different than the life that you live, you hold yourself to a higher standard. You, you are, are, you're seeking something. You're pushing the envelope. You are challenging yourself. You, you are, are willing to walk by faith and not by sight. And you know as a warrior that there's a, a dramatic difference between being a warrior and being a warrior. Anybody can worry. That step towards your fear is the step into bravery. Because we, we're, we're scared of what we don't know. And there is only one way to learn and to know, and that is to confront that fear. You have to step, you have to go. And this simple action, this simple attitude, it answers so many questions. Either you put in the work now, and you live the life of thrills and possibilities, or you work and pay bills and end up paying medical bills for the rest of your existence. Put in the work, burn through the other layers, get past self-doubt, build your body, build your mind, get the emotional maturity necessary for you to overcome the need of being validated by others. There's greatness in you, but it'll only come out if you're willing to burn through the sense of being burnt out. If you're burning out, that means you've been set on fire. And that which is on fire can ignite other fires. Stay focused. Why is it that people are frightened by commitment? Because when you say the word commitment, that intimidates a lot of people. Why? Because it means you have to deliver. How do you get to the gym every day? You step, you go. How do you, how do you change your diet? You step, you go. How do you overcome fear of failure, or fear of success, or, or fear of fear itself? You step. That when we put ourselves in a situation where we say we're going to do it, it, it puts you in another zone where the universe responds to you when you have that kind of consciousness. See, the universe responds to the man or woman that refuses to be denied. Because that is your commitment. That business that you want, that book you want to write, that dream that you have of controlling your destiny. That is yours. That power to create that and to manifest that, that is yours. First step you need to take is just that. Step. Sometimes horrible things happen to good people. Life isn't fair. 
and it can be heart-wrenching. And if you're having one of those dark days, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay to feel that darkness. When challenges and issues come back to back to back to back and it seems like something is after me, something is attacking me, something is attacking my journey, look for the lesson in it all. You will grow through what you go through. The question is, are you willing to go through it? When those bad things happen, what are you going to do? Are you going to let this horrible situation dictate the way you feel and the way you handle it? Are you going to fall over, fall down, fall apart? Or are you going to face this issue with courage and with resolution? You know darkness. So embrace, embrace that darkness. Don't look away from it, own it. Step up to the challenge, no matter what you face. Start walking, take that step. Every day, no matter what you are facing, get up and start walking and never surrender. And remember that even in the most wretched times, when you face darkness yourself, no matter how bad things get, remember not to stop, remember not to pause, remember not to hesitate, remember to put one foot in front of the other, take that first step and start walking and we will fight. And in fighting, we will win. And if not the battle, and if not the war, we will win because our spirit, it will never surrender. And that is the ultimate victory, to hold your head high. And even in the face of inescapable defeat to stand and to fight that is to win don't allow yourself a switch off button I know there's always an answer no matter how dark that place may be there's always a way out just gotta keep going. Hold on to that fundamental quality of faith. Have faith that on the other side of your pain is something good. Your brain is like a circuit switch. Once you believe you are something, you actually embody it. You embody that feeling. If you were, God forbid, in a coma, and you woke up, and you didn't really have a memory, and you were told that you used to be a Navy SEAL, and they want you back now when you're healthy, do you think you'd act differently and hold yourself differently, conduct yourself different, and have a different self-concept of who you are than if you were told you were a piano instructor? Being successful in life is all about having the proper belief system in who you are, truly believing that you are something unique, that you are something special in that field. If you truly believe inside of you that you are one of the best actors in the world, you will be entirely different than if you're like, I hope I'm good. Your expressions will be totally different. Your tone of voice, 
You'll talk in a more convincing fashion. You'll use your natural voice instead of a scripted one. You'll be more emphatic. You'll be more real, more relatable. Our brain is like a circuit. And so if we introduce it with the proper wiring, you're going to go straight to your target. If you're unsure about who you are, then your dreams, your goals, they will never become a reality. Everyone has mental doubts in life, internal conflicts. Even the most successful people that you look up to, but they don't live there. It's how you handle those negative thoughts in that exact moment and overwhelm them with positive action. And that comes with this utmost confidence in yourself that you can handle the situation. Trust in yourself that you are better than the moment. The greats think differently. The, the greats see differently, right? The, the greats have a different worldview. The greats, they, they approach the game in a totally different way. So I need you to do me a huge favor. I need you to think about what you're thinking about when your effort is low. Because if you can get this, if you can get this, you can get any success you want in life. You can have anything you want in life if you can get this. The next time you give a low effort, right? You give it 70% or 50% or 30%. I want you to think about what you're thinking about when your effort is low. If, if, if your effort is low, you're probably not thinking about the opportunity. You're probably thinking about the obligation. And when you think about E.T., how you stay pumped up? E.T., how you stay on fire? E.T., how you always driven? Even in the midst of trials and tribulations, even in the midst of your haters, when people trying to break you and tear you down. E.T., how you stay strong? I keep thinking about the opportunity. Every single day, I'm thinking about the opportunity, and I'm not looking at this thing as an obligation. I'm not looking at this thing as something that I have to do, or that I'm forced to do, right? Something that somebody's making me do. Every time I wake up, I'm thinking, I'm alive, baby, this is the day. This is an opportunity. If you want what you've never had before, if you want to do what you've never done before, if you want to be what you've never been before, change your mentality. And I want you to see that effort goes up when you look, when you look at it as, I got an opportunity of a lifetime. But you should be excited about the fact that you have an opportunity. Life can throw you some curves. And it's not just the things that you see coming, but sometimes it's the things that you didn't see coming that hit you out of nowhere, that set you back in such a way that it seems like you can't get over. And you've reached your limit and your bandwidth is full. And you already said, I can't take another thing. And then out of nowhere, here comes something you didn't see coming and you're in it. And in your homes, somewhere in your heart, these words are echoing. Am I going to make it? When you get into a tight spot and everything goes against you until it seems that you cannot hold on for a minute longer, never give up then, for that is just the place and time that the tide will turn. There are times when your energy feels so depleted that you want to give up, that it looks just totally impossible. And I can tell you from my own personal experience, don't give up then. That's when you've got to fall forward, when life is kicking dirt in your face. Don't give up then. That's when most people turn back. As long as you're alive, there is hope. You're still alive. You're still here. It's never too late. And it's never too dark. And we can always turn things around there's going to be bad days there's going to be dark days but you got to embrace it because that pain is what makes you stronger pain is the high cost of growth if you want to grow up you want to be mature there is no way to do it without pain you can't grow up on easy street and the very thing that discourages you is the very thing that develops you no one's coming to save you. No one's coming to save you. The only person that's gonna make a drastic change in your life, whether that's physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, the only person that is going to dig you out of your hole is who? You. You have to do it for you. 
You've got to become courageous to stand up within yourself, to face it and step forward. We all get a taste of that victim mentality, the why me? You can become the victim of the situation or the victor of the situation. You need to be the master of your emotions, not let them affect you. You are the dictator. You are the captain of your boat, whether you let things affect you in a negative way or a positive way. I don't lose. I only win or learn. In life, there's only winning or learning. All your problems become gifts once you learn from them. And some of you have allowed adversity to make you stop. And I'm telling you right now, don't give up. I'm telling you right now, don't give in. Get through it. Execute, execute, execute. In the midst of adversity, execute. You're going to work through this. You're going to get up. You're going to get dressed. You're going to get out. And you're going to do what you've been called to do. You're going to be what you called to be. And you're going to prove that everybody that tried to break you, everybody that tried to kill your dream, you're going to prove all of them wrong. And if you can work through your pain, I'm guaranteeing you, on the other side is a reward. Pain is not permanent. Pain is temporary.